Zoogly Ang is about to land here in Rise of Kingdoms. So today we're going to go over dozens of different pre-release battle testing reports so that way we can figure out what the best possible commander pairs and talent builds are for day one. What's going on guys? Cheers. Now, the other day I posted a video where I compared YSG to Zoogly Yang and I got a couple of comments on that video of people saying, oh, typical Omniarch, he's clickbaiting and didn't even include any reports. Oh, classic clickbait there's no testing shown in the video guys he's not even in the game he's not in the game what kind of standards am I being held to it is functionally impossible to have actual battle testing for Zoogly Yang I'm over here arguing with troglodytes in the comment section and I had to just I had to stop myself I'm like these people are too dumb for me to even like I don't even know what to say but then I came across a battle simulator for rise of kingdoms and wouldn't you know they've actually already updated their battle simulator to include Zoogly Yang so here what we're going to do today is we're going to go over over 50 different battle reports that I did with Zoogly Yang and various different pairings going up against primarily Nevsky with Joan of Arc secondary. And the reason that I chose to go up against a Nevsky with Joan is because in my recent experience, Nevsky Joan seems to be the most powerful single army in the open field. Now I spent literally probably five hours using this program, trying to figure out what the best possible combinations could be for day one. And I'm just going to say right here at the beginning of the video that Boudicca with Zugliang is probably going to take the crown for the most powerful open field march in the entire game. But don't just take my word for it. We're going to go over all of the numbers here. But if you appreciate all of the time that I spent testing these different pairings, go ahead and drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton and consider subscribing for more rise of kingdoms content. Okay. Now, before before we get into the battle reports let me just have a couple of disclaimers here okay this is not an official program but it does do a really good job at simulating the actual battle formula in rise of kingdoms and it also takes into account random things that proc at a certain percent chance like all the different talents all the different skills it calculates all of the different buffs and it's actually really in depth it's crazy how good this battle calculator actually is so is this official data no like i said it's literally impossible to have that data right now but this is really close and it's better than nothing the second thing that i want to acknowledge is that this obviously is a 1v1 duel okay we can't simulate open field fights yet so all we can do is duel one commander pair against another which again does not represent actual fighting but because we can't actually fight this is the best that we can do and knowing how well a commander pair does in a duel is still useful information is it the only good information of course not literally doesn't even take into account aoe right it doesn't even take into account march speed okay so i understand that this is not perfect finally because zoogliang is not in the game yet we don't know exactly how some of his skills are going to work in particular the fourth skill with the march key effect so let me explain to you guys how the developer of this simulation has interpreted the way that this fourth skill works and we'll have to test this once he's actually in the game so the way that this is programmed in the simulation is that he will start the battle with the marquee effect because that's what it says here on the expertise which means it's going to give him a 10 percent damage bonus then when the primary commander activates their active skill it will consume the marquee effect and pop the skill damage and then when the secondary commander pops their active skill it will activate the marquee effect once again now we don't know if that's how it's going to work once he's actually in the game it could be the case that only zoogliang can activate and consume the marquee effect and the other commander in the army won't actually influence that at all but we really have no idea so that's how it is programmed in the simulator and i'm telling you that up front because that could potentially be wrong i think if i were to put money on it that sounds to me like how it will most likely work but we'll just have to wait and see and the last thing I want to mention is some of the liberties that I've taken for these calculations so for example what I've done is I've set both sides of this fight to the Ottoman Empire civilization because I think that is what a lot of players use in the late game I also set the troop capacity to 210,000. I understand that you can use over 300k if you want to but I wanted to save a little bit of time in doing this so I just set it to the standard 210. I put both sides with 5% extra skill damage because a lot of people use Twilight Falls which is the skin that would give you 5% extra skill damage. I assumed that they were both using a complete legendary set with no talents but full iconics and a horn with a ring. This is going to vary depending on like who's on the account right you might have all purple gear for example but 
I think it was fair to assume that you could have all legendaries and zero talents because that's more luck based. So that's what I settled with. That's not perfect, but it's what I thought would be most fair. And yes, this does actually incorporate iconics here. And also I put a 10% defense buff like the item buff, as well as assuming that both sides would have a 10% health rune, which does come down to luck. But I think that that would be the best rune that you could have, as well as both players being VIP level 17 to 18. 37% attack from crystal tech and 10% all damage from crystal tech. Now there's a good chance that if a commander pair performs really well under these circumstances, it will probably perform similarly under slightly different circumstances. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is establish a baseline before Zugliang comes into the game. A lot of players right now are using Boudica with YSG in the open field. So I have a couple of battle reports here from Boudica with YSG within the same context as the rest of the tests. So we have some sort of a baseline in the open field. And as you can see with the first report, Nevsky Joan wins with 27k remaining the second report they win with 24k remaining the third report they win with 33k remaining the fourth report they actually lose 26k remaining for Boudicca YSG and the fifth report they win with 20k remaining so obviously there's a little bit of randomness here a lot of the different talents on these commanders and even like YSG second skill play a big factor in how these swing back and forth but in general Nevsky Joan will beat Boudicca YSG most of the time and that makes sense because it's cavalry versus archers right even though we're using ottoman empire that has a special unit for archers it doesn't matter nevsky jones still wins here so let's move on to our first zugliang test and here we see this is a full skill tree and we're going to talk about skill trees later in the video so stay tuned for that you'll see what I mean, but this goes all in on the skill tree with the rest of the points in the archer tree. And you can see that Boudicca with Zugliang actually defeats Nevsky Joan in the first report, 36 K remaining second report, 39 K remaining third report, 65 K remaining fourth report, 73 and a half K remaining fifth report, 55 K remaining. So out of all five of those tests, Boudicca Zugliang won by a really healthy amount. That's not to say that they'll win every time, but they have won every time here so far. Next, I tried Zugliang primary with Boudicca secondary. And in this part of the test, we did the full archer tree with going all the way up to get rejuvenate and a couple of other talents in the skill tree. Again, we'll talk about that later in the video, but just know that this is the full archer tree build. And we see here Zugliang with Boudicca does win once again with 32k remaining second test 35k remaining third test 50k remaining then we switch to the skill tree and we see only 16k remaining here we see 52k remaining here we see Nevsky actually beat out the Zugliang Boudicca with 8k remaining so so far we can kind of get the idea that the Boudicca primary is better than the Zugliang primary and it also seems to be the case that the skill tree for that combination is a little bit better but let's keep moving on here this report we did Boudicca primary with Zugliang Zugliang secondary and this time we went all in on the archer tree so before we did skill this is now archer and we see Boudicca wins once again 56k remaining second report we have 70k remaining full archer tree again third report 32k remaining fourth report 60k remaining so really it doesn't matter if Boudicca is primary it seems to win every single time I think this skill tree is probably better here but we'll talk about that later in the video next I wanted to test Zugliang with YSG because this is a march that theoretically should perform really well in fights the problem is it has no march speed right uh, but for just a 1v1 duel it should perform well here we see that it does win with 15k remaining here we see it loses with 12k remaining for nevsky here we can see it loses once again 46k left for nevsky here we could see that it loses again with 26k left on nevsky and i believe i used the skill tree for all of these as well so Zugliang with Isongye actually performed worse than the Boudicca with Zugliang. And we'll talk about that later in the video, but this kind of surprised me. Uh, I guess not. It shouldn't surprise me that much. And if you are wondering, yes, this does take into account the double relic on the museum. So this is including all the extra defense that Isongye is bringing. So that's pretty crazy. Next, I wanted to test Zugliang with Henry because I know a lot of players like to use Henry because he's a little bit tanky in the open field. Here we can see that it actually does, in fact, lose to Nevsky. This is again full skill tree, uh, 13 and a half K left on Nevsky's army. 
here we could see it loses again at 7k left very close fights here here we could see that it actually wins with 43k left this was definitely an outlier because the next test it loses once again with 23k left for Nevsky so the Zugliang Henry is very similar I would say almost equal in power to the Nevsky in this 1v1 duel and that is really what Henry is good at is 1v1 fights so it's not that surprising but it is surprising to me that Boudicca would perform like significantly better it seems so interesting stuff there next I went ahead and I tested Artemisia secondary here we could see that Zugliang does lose to the Nevsky 45k left for Nevsky 51k left here 52k left for this report and all these use the skill tree as well so I only have three reports from this one I wanted to get a lot of tests from a lot of different commanders each one of these battle reports took like over a minute and a half or two minutes and we have almost 60 of them okay so I've literally spent hours doing this so uh, forgive me for not having 10 20 reports for each pair I I wish I had the time to do that but I don't and also like it's a pretty clear winner after three or five reports like you sort of get a general idea of how good it's going to be and here Zugliang Artemisia lost every single one next I wanted to check with Nebu okay I think Zugliang with Nebu is going to be a relatively popular pairing here we could see that it loses pretty heavily actually 75k left for the Nevsky here we could see that it's got lost again 55k left for Nevsky and it lost here again 64k left for Nevsky this is again all with the skill tree and you can see that Nebu actually performed really bad here and the thing is that could be an indication that this pair is not great together but also you have to keep in mind that Nebu's only hitting one target for 1500 whereas he has a five target AoE so theoretically in the open field he's going to be hitting way more targets and getting way more value but it seemed here that the extra defense just didn't really do it this pairing seemed to lack attack and I noticed a trend here a lot of the different commanders that performed poorly uh especially like the Artemisia pairing was just lacking attack and that's even with the bonus attack that we programmed in with the crystal technology so yeah it seems like Zugliang's health is really good but he needs more attack to compete with a march like nevsky joan okay moving on we have cyrus now this report shows nevsky surviving with 34k left the next report shows nevsky winning again 47k left the next report again shows nevsky winning 58k left next we went ahead and tested gilgamesh and again these are all with this skill tree okay we have nevsky winning with 84k left 74k left and then we moved on to ramses because i was like okay this obviously like i figured Gilgamesh might not perform very well and he he didn't there's just a lot of health here and they just weren't outputting the same damage that Nevsky Joan was doing and also Gilgamesh is the same damage factor as Nebu so I kind of assumed that it would perform just as poorly and that seems to be the case again I only did two tests maybe that changes maybe Nevsky got really lucky I don't know moving on we did Ramses and this was pretty pretty surprising I guess it shouldn't be because of my theory of the attack being important for this March but here we see Ramses as the secondary actually winning surviving with 38k left here we see Ramses secondary again winning 27k left the next report shows 45k left here we see I, I ran another test 10k left so of all four reports with Ramses it was uh it was a victory now it was close for this one right but I guess again this shouldn't be super surprising because an expertise Ramses he has a lot of attack that he's bringing to the open field and he's dealing 2,000 single target damage you know this is this is good on paper but you you have to stay connected for that double hit of Ramses there is some healing here though which you know that does really make this a good dueling March so that's probably why this is winning I don't know if this is necessarily going to be good in the open field but but it's performing well in a 1v1 test against what is arguably the best pairing in the game moving on I did a couple of more tests with Boudicca Zugliang this was with the full archer tree uh, and I just wanted to see because most of the commander pairings in this video lost to Nevsky right most of the pairs with Zug lost but Boudicca primary seems to always win against Nevsky Joan which is crazy now again we have healing here as well so like this is a good dueling March but Boudicca full archer tree survives with 54k left here we have full archer tree 48k left here we have again full archer tree 53k left Boudicca Zugliang is defeating Nevsky Joan every single time which is insane now I wanted to test a couple of other things because I was wondering like okay maybe Boudicca Zugliang is just a really good dueling March let me pair it up against another March that's good at dueling so I did Nevsky with Minamoto and Nevsky Minamoto loses again 58k left on the Boudicca March 
here we have another test 58k uh, left on Boudicca here as well third test I did 60k left on Boudicca here so I mean the Minamoto is losing every time as well now here just for fun I did a Zhang Yu with Joan to see if maybe the insane skill cycle would just out DPS the Boudicca Zugliang and that was not the case here you could see almost 80k left on the Boudicca March and I knew right away that this this was probably going to be the outcome for all of them I only did one test there I moved on to Zugliang with Honda Tadakatsu as secondary and it did actually lose to the Nevsky but there was only 11k left here so that was really interesting to see the second test there was 26k left for the Nevsky so Zugliang lost once again third testing here 10k left on the Nevsky so very close okay uh, and I know that it says 210k troops but the program does actually uh add 20k right when it starts the battle because of the skill on Honda so it was actually battle battling with 230k I was making sure that that was the case because technically that's how this would work and I think that's probably why these reports were so close uh it's because there were literally more troops in the Zuliang Honda March like it would be in the open field uh next I moved on to Mehmed uh and the same thing here uh it was actually using the bonus troop capacity so don't let this actually fool you but the Nevsky survived with 23k left here we have the Mehmed army actually winning with 30k left here we have Mehmed winning again with 17k left and here I ran it a fourth time Nevsky Joan won with 11k left so again this is one of those marches that is performing really well on paper but remember Mehmed has no March speed Zugliang has no March speed so this is one of those things where you know if you can catch the enemy you're going to perform really well with this March uh, there's just a lot of health here there's a lot of bonus skill damage there's attack on Mehmed so it makes a lot of sense but this army is going to be very slow in the open field so it's probably not something that I would recommend but I mean the numbers are there like if if you're playing heavy defense you're popping out of your city you're hitting a couple active skills and retreating this might be a really good march that you could try moving on we did Boudicca Zugliang once again and here I put it up against a Guan with CPO uh this was the full skill tree I believe and I mean obviously this just absolutely melts the Guan CPO uh, archers archers counter infantry so it just makes sense that that would be the case but look at the power loss difference I mean it's absolutely insane it this march is shredding pretty much everything I did a second test here 140k remaining like there's no contest here this is going to be the infantry slayer it's ridiculous here I went ahead and I did a Boudicca up against Attila Nevsky because I thought maybe this is going to be a better 1v1 duel uh and it absolutely got destroyed 93k left on the Boudicca here I ran it once again we see 90k left on the Boudicca then I went ahead and did it up against a Nevsky William and we see Boudicca Zugliang wins once again with 71k left I ran the test again almost 51k left here as well and that is that that is all the tests that I ran that is 58 different battle tests that we did and what we can conclude is that Boudicca primary with Zugliang secondary seems to be the single best open field March in the game I mean I took multiple different meta marches from Cavalry and paired them up against 1v1 and theoretically Cavalry should win they should at least come close because cavalry literally counters archers but in every single instance even the cavalry marches that should be good in 1v1s were still losing to Boudicca Zugliang now again this is not official numbers so we don't know for sure but what we do know is that this battle calculator is very good for pretty much all the other commanders in the game so I think this is pointing us in a pretty accurate direction for what commanders are going to be good here and I think that Boudicca prime primary Zugliang secondary is not only going to be the best pairing for Zugliang but is probably going to be the best open field pairing in the entire game regardless of troop type which is not what I expected I expected this army to perform well I didn't expect it to beat Nevsky Joan so we'll have to test that when he drops in the game to see for sure now my theory here is a, a couple of things for one um with Boudicca prime primary you actually get you know the enemy has this debuff right where they take 35 percent increased skill damage and on the fourth skill because Zugliang is expertise if Boudicca's active skill will remove the marquee effect and deal the 1500 damage factor it's possible that that 1500 damage factor is popped when the target has the debuff that's possible usually when you inflict a debuff it will take effect on the following turn so uh, we don't know exactly if this 1500 damage factor is going to trigger exactly on the same turn as Boudicca's damage factor or 
if the turn that Boudicca pops her active skill, it's going to consume the marquee effect. And then the next turn, it's going to deal the damage. Either way, there's a good chance that this 1500 damage factor is going to occur during the debuff window here. Uh, again, don't take my word for it. That might not be the case, but at least in the testing from what this calculator is showing, that's probably what's happening here. And that's probably why the Boudicca primary is so devastating. On top of that, Boudicca does have a lot of Archer attack, which we desperately need while still being relatively tanky under that 80% mark and healing, reducing skill damage taken. I mean, you all know that Boudicca is just insane. She's great. And it makes a lot of sense that that would be the best pairing for Zugliang. It's kind of a match made in heaven too, right? Because the 10% March speed is something that Zugliang really needs. And he's bringing 30% of health, which is the only stat that Boudicca doesn't have, right? So, I mean, it's just so much damage factor here. It's nuts. If for whatever reason you're using your Boudicca Prime for something else, like maybe with a YSG, for example, and you're trying to use your Zugliang in a second army, who might you actually pair him with? Well, I think Henry was a really good option, right? I think there's some nice synergy here because Zugliang has the AOE and a bunch of health and all that stuff. Henry is a really nice single target damage dealer debuffer. And he also brings a lot of the stats that Zugliang is missing, such as March speed and enemy territory attack and defense, plus some instant proc damage, 10% bonus archer damage. And here with the expertise. And I think if you pair these together, you really probably need the expertise on Henry but 30% more normal attack damage over 70% rage. And otherwise what's huge here is the 20% less normal attack damage. That tankiness is really going to help Zugliang as well. Keep him alive and dealing a ton of damage. Beyond that, we did see Ramses perform well here. I just, that might be exclusive to duels. I have no idea, but again, Ramses tons of Archer attack here, like tons of Archer attack. And I think that that lends really well to the massive amounts of skill damage that are being done by Zugliang. If you guys didn't know your attack percentage, like your total attack is also part of the calculation for skill damage. So having a ton of attack here is insane. Plus you have a 10% chance to gain 40% March speed. Like that's, that's a nice little way of getting away from a fight. You don't want to be in. This could be a really interesting combination. We'll have to wait and see. I think Cyrus performed okay. Again, he has 30% attack here, which is nice. And 15% March speed. That March speed is going to be absolutely huge. It might even be worth testing Cyrus primary with Zugliang secondary, just for this debuff here on the active skill. This could be pretty insane. Uh, and it's also worth noting that Cyrus has circular AOE as well on his fourth skill, and he gains even more bonus stats on his expertise. So this is another pairing that you want to keep your eye on when Zugliang does come into the game. I think Cyrus primary potentially with Zugliang secondary could be quite good. And then that leaves us finally with, I think Nebu and Artemisia are, I, I think Nebu is going to be better than Artemisia only because he has the March speed here. I think functionally it will just perform better, but I don't know. I didn't love the results from Nebu here. And I mean, I know it was a duel, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, again, I think Zugliang probably wants to be primary here. That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong, but that I'm leaning towards that. I don't think commanders with archer and skill trees have enough talent points to really get buckler shield from conquering. I know I've tried to sort of do that here, but Zugliang feels like a commander that you want to grab feral nature for. And if you do, I don't know. While we're on the topic of talent builds, let's go over the talent builds that I think are going to be the best for Zugliang. I think this is probably your best, at least your most consistent one. And also the best for just popping out of a city, getting a few skill shots and then popping back into your city. So either on offense or defense i think this is going to be a really good talent build we come all the way up to feral nature obviously and then we grab venomous sting off on the right side of the archer tree i also put three points into razor sharp and then we came over here and put one point into full quiver the other option that you could do is come all the way up here and grab rejuvenate and clarity and then go all the way up to the top of whistling arrows the top of the archer tree and then you have two points left over so i put one in defense and one in attack but you could take this point in attack and put it over here in razor sharp to gain three extra rage or you could take some points out of whistling arrows if you wanted to and remove this one and fill out razor sharp if you prefer that i think if you have a horn on this march i think you're going to be able to generate enough rage especially with the expertise on zugliang giving you bonus rage a lot of people are definitely going to get good value out of that 30 bonus rage now if you do pair him with somebody like henry for example um the question is like do you even try the support tree and i think the answer is probably no i know that you get a lot of rage from rejuvenate but i think that 
where Zugliang, he really wants the skill tree. He just wants all the skill damage all day, every day, forever. That's what's going to give you the most value and the most bang for your buck here. And I think that that just, you know, based on the testing we see with this calculator, that seems to be pretty accurate. Again, take the testing with a grain of salt. The calculator is accurate, but it's not perfect. And we don't know exactly how some of these skills are going to work. So I think this is pointing us in a really good direction, but we'll have to wait and see. I feel like I've made that pretty clear throughout this video, but I'm still going to get people in the comment section below saying that, you know, these damage calculators are unreliable. They're not accurate. They're not realistic, whatever. I'm probably just going to ban people. Like I just can't spend my time going through a bunch of stupid comments anymore. It's just, it's just a waste of time okay anyway if you made it to the end of the video and you found it useful or informative drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out there into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there comment down below what you think of these results were you surprised by any of these outcomes do you think that this is to be expected based on his kit i would love to hear from you guys down there and while you're down there consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on the arc i will talk to you guys again soon Peace.